All right, we are recording now. Welcome back, everybody, one more time. So now, I am done with my part. If you are happy with every single thing that I've just marked up and showed you that happened last week on NZDJPY, and you believe that next week you will be able to see this setup, hands down, give me a two in the chat box. Give me a two in the chat box if you will be able to see this setups for yourself next week. Thank you, everybody. I'm, I'm so grateful. I'm so grateful. I'm so happy that we will be able to take this trade. I love a swing trade. Uh, April, I know you do. I know you do. And that is all I want us to be able to do. Smart Money is always giving us this entry, hands down. And we should be able to get into this trade so easily. We should be able to get into it. And it's all about knowing where and where the smart money people are coming into the market. Right? All right, without much I do, I'd like to introduce a very genius man that I met. He's my teacher. I, he's my teacher because he teaches me quite a lot. When you see his chat, my guys, you would be surprised what he is doing. I spoke to him on one on one basis and he said to me, Francis, you know what? I was I was a trader already. I am an I am to be able to sharpen what I am doing. And guess what? I took trade from this guy and I was surprised how much profit I came up with. Since then he has become my buddy. The concept works across forex and these indices. Yes, it does work across everywhere. Even even on stocks, you, you would be happy to go on stocks and then believe me, it's going to work for you. But yeah, this man I'm talking about is no other person than Mr. OJ. He's from the team of um, Zuena. I don't know if Zuena is on the call, but then this guy is doing so, so much with supply and demand. I want him to teach us something with supply and demand. It goes hand in hand with smart money concepts. Get your pens, papers, and let's do some work right here, guys. I am going to share my screen. I'm gonna leave it to him. I'm gonna make him the host. Mr. OJ, the floor is yours. Yeah, hello. Hello. Um, hello, everyone. Um, if you can hear me, put, 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 chat, put one on the chat box, please, so I can just know how many people can hear me properly. Yeah, that is the spirit, that is the spirit. Um, thank you everyone for coming today. Um, Francis has been a very good uh, trader, a friend, and probably a brother, and we're gonna do more bigger things in years to come. Um, I'm a trader, I'm a supply and demand trader, AKA smart money or whatever you call it, but I just believe trading is similar to everything you do in the shop. If there's a discount, you buy. If there's sales, you buy. So we in supply and demand, we're looking for where there is sales. I'm going to start sharing my screen and I'm just going to take a, um, show you how I mark up chart. And from there, we take it. If you have any question at any point, just feel free to ask. Um, okay, let me see. Um, it's not letting me share my screen here. Let me see. Maybe I need to do something, but one minute. Come back. Francis, have you made me the host? Because say host disabled participant uh, screen sharing. Hello. Hello, Francis. Hello. Yeah, I have yeah. made you, I've made you the host. So yeah, just go ahead and share the screen. Use the use the OJ one in machine one because that's my PC. That uh, one should be the one to the host. Otherwise, it's not gonna go. Uh, on my on my on my phone is not gonna work. All right, let me look into OJ one in machine. That is the one. Yeah, that should that should be the one that was easier to do. All right, all right, okay, yeah. Okay. I can't make you the host because um. 
now you are the host with your phone so please make yourself the oj money machine the host and then you can get started yeah oh, okay All right, let me do that All right. yes. hold on everyone some fire is coming Have you done it? No, it's, let me see. I'm trying to get that. Uh... Go through the participant chat, yeah? The participant yeah. list, and then select yeah, yourself and I've make it the host. Yeah, you're now, you're now the host. Yeah, I think I've done it now, yeah. Boom, there we go. Okay. Let's Everybody give Mr. Like OJ now. some fire, guys. Let's give Mr. OJ some fire in the chat box. Okay, here we go. Can everybody see my screen now? Okay, so basically, with with demand and supply, what we do is we have the simplest way to look at it is you have what we call drop based rally. The drop based rallies is usually a demand. The reason why they are demand, for example, here on this chart is a drop, then you have the base here, then the price rally back up. They usually come at the end of a trend. So if you look at this chart now from here, we're having an uptrend, uptrend, uptrend up to this point. But as a demand and supply person, I've seen this last rally, a base out and it dropped but that is not where the trend change this is where the trend change here is where the trend change because this is where the suppliers were able to take out a structure for the first time this base here so and that becomes what we call rally base drop that is a supply it means the suppliers were bigger than the buyers. And what happened? Because they are bigger in the market, the price continued to drop. It will drop until you hit the next demand zone. And the reason why price changed in this area is because I'm going to put a vertical line there, just at that base. So if I, if I minimize this and I take it to a higher time frame, you see why that was a change there. There is another base here. And one thing people don't understand about demand and supply is because there's what we call the primary demand and supply and the intermediate. The primary is basically the higher time frame. For example, if you're trading on a daily chart, on a daily, if I'm trading on a daily chart, my primary demand and supply will be on this daily chart. Here will be my primary. Anything in the lower time frame will be intermediate to a intermediate um, demand and supply areas or drop base rallies. So if I'm looking at this chart today now and I want to trade it for next week, let me just clear up all the markets I've done now. First thing I need to do is to find out. Let me open this. Uh, 
guys. Okay, chat box. I want to be able to see the chat box. Uh, so if I'm marking up this chat right now, from here we start having a rally. And the rally moves from here. Base. Rallied again. Base again. And now rally all the way up. However, if you remember, I said the suppliers took control from here earlier because we had a trend going up from here. As soon as they took that control, once price gets to this point, this is my primary supply. I will go to maybe like a one hour chart. And what I'm waiting for is a break of structure here. This is the last demand that pulled us up. Last base. That took us up to this point. And when price came back, the price must never close below what we call a base candle. A base candle is basically a candle that has the weak, the body is less than 50% of the entire range of the candle. So what am I trying to say in, in essence? Basically, if you have a candle like this, this is a weak, that is a body. Forgive my drawing, and that's another week. These two weeks combined is bigger than this body. So we call this a base candle. In the manual supply, we call this a base candle. They are basically the candles that begins and end all our analysis in demand and supply. So what this candle is telling me, or most people call this candle a doji, um, hirami, or whatever you call it, I'm more interested only in the body size compared to the whole range. And if you look at this move all the way here to the highest high here, the highest high is still on this side. This is the last blazing candle before we created the high. The moment price came back and closed below that body here, with this coming back down, it's a close below that body here. Once it rallies back at this point and go back up to there, I'm selling with my stop loss just above the last base before that move. And this cell will run for me from here. The TP1, first TP on this will be here. As you can see, that was the last place we had a bit of a consolidation before it went up. The next TP will be here. And finally, I'll end it somewhere around here. All what is going to be doing now is going back. If you notice what's going to happen since after, after this suppliers have taken control again, what we're noticing now is it come back, it goes back, and retests the last base where it came out from. It break this base again. It come down. Go back, attempt to test it. No, it didn't go. But this is the most forceful supply here. It's coming back again. It tested a second time. What you're going to get again is a move from here all the way down. It's going to continue all the way down until it get down here. When it gets here, it will react again a second time and come back here or somewhere around here. Then it come back down again a second time. Forgive my drawing because my desktop is a bit all over the place. But yeah. And that is how it will repeat itself till it get down somewhere here. However, as for my own trading, I normally come out at this second target. So I'm, I can't see the chat box at the moment, so please forgive me if you have any questions that I'm not answering. I'm going to try to mark up other chat and see what is going on. If you, if you have any questions regarding how we find it, I will start, I'll mark up a different chart or a different time frame. It's as simple as it gets. You can mark up any time frame you want to trade the simple rule is you start with how long do you want your trade to last 
to me, I, I, I have a normal nine to five job and I'm trading at the same time. So my trade usually stay a whole day. So once I get into a trade, I'm holding it for the whole day. The aim is to stay in that trade for the whole of the day. However, if you are somebody that is, that has got time to trade, if I want to trade on this one hour chart, for example, let me do Friday now. Let me show you what happened here on a Friday. Your directional bias from what I showed you on the daily chart in a time frame is from here, we're going down. So if you have your directional bias from here going, okay, the trade is going down from here. That is where I'm going to be going. And this is Friday. Let me put a vertical line on Friday. Uh, Friday is here. So you go down to one hour. You're only trading short. I'm not trading no long. What are you looking for? For people that trade other system, all I trade is I'm looking for the last place where we had a series of bases that took out a demand area. A demand area is basically an area where there is a rally in price. For example, if you look at this point here, we had two consecutive green candles giving people the impression that the price is going to go up. But in reality, you already know that your directional bias is, bias is down. Once it gets to this point, the first thing you're looking for is where is my base in that rally that took out, the, that, took out that rally? That is the base you're looking for. Where is the top of that base? And all you do is sell. Where is the next set of rally against starting? The next rally started from here which is top of this base here. Let me just mark it up again. Your target, your first target would be around here. So if on a Friday, the price start going up, I'm, I don't care. I'm not trading that. My aim is I've got a direction telling me from the higher time frame that this trade is going to continue going down. And to, if as, as a confirmation, what I normally do is I would advise anybody, any system you've been using before, never try to forget about it. They all come in handy. When I first started learning how to trade, I used to use indicators. But now I understand how to use indicators properly. So when you do this, it's a one hour chart. I'm only going short. For the first time, my stochastic on Friday is overbought on the one hour chart. And that is all the confirmation I need. Another thing you find out is if you are the person that used, um, if you use, uh, if you use RSI, if you look at this high and this high, and you compare this high and this high, that's your clear, clear cut evidence of divergence there. RSI is making higher high, even your stochastic is making higher high, but price is not making higher high. Showing you that that strength, there's willingness of the price to move. Some people are willing to buy, but they don't have enough energy to move the price. So it's still going to continue downward in my own analysis of it, that it's going to go all the way down to those levels. However, every system has its own limit. Let me see if there's anything coming up on the chat box. I'm trying to check it on my phone. So I'm, this is basically a simple, easy way to look at demand and supply and what other people who call smart money or whatever. There's different names to it, but the most important thing is understanding what you're looking for. Once you know what you're looking for on the chart, whatever happens, stick to the game plan and go, listen, I'm not doing more than that. And if you look at this, the risk is about how many pips from from entry 7118 to 35, it's about 15, 16 pip there about. It's just two or three people above that high, the top line, and all this zone. Let me see, I'm going to put that. Uh, 
Anybody just put two or three people over the high, highest line. So this is basically my zone. So I'm trading on Friday. And that is my target. I didn't trade this pair on Friday because I don't want to use the pairs I traded so that I don't, I don't become biased into my analysis. I just basically try to find a, a fresh chart, do the analysis. If anybody's got any chart they want to analyze or they feel like, just put it on the chat box and say, I want you to look at this chart, what time frame, then we learn from there and possibly Somebody if you have any questions, you can take it from there. AUD. Uh, what time frame? Can you put a time frame, please? Can you do it on the four hour to the one hour, please? Four hour to one hour. GB, GB, AUD. All right. I'm going to. So let's go to GB, AUD, AUD. So let's start from four hour. Four hour is our main line. I've got my own lines on here already, so I'm just going to take them off because. So from four hour, what I'm looking for is, what is the price doing? The price is based here. It's at a rally in from here all the way, but this is the last base. So I'm gonna try my best to make it, uh, I need to find a way to move this. Okay, let me see if I can take out the volume. The volume is at, I think I've, I've, does everybody not take out this volume at the bottom? So that everybody can see what I'm marking up, because I think. Right click, right click on the volume two, and then um, you can take it off. Add volume. Uh, I've right clicked on it, but it's not coming up. It's move to pain, existing pain. Okay, yeah, it's done. Okay, that's it. So why I want to take the volume out so you can see my chart clearly. So from here now, what I'm going to do is, this is the last base we had. So another thing I tend to do is, I do my, my demand of blue, and my supplies go with red. So the next thing I'm looking for is the next area where there was a rally. This does not qualify as a rally. That does not qualify as a rally. Here qualify as a rally. However, we've been there for so long. It's one of the bases. I'm just going to put that here. So I'll change color of that. Left for me, the rally I will prefer will be this one. That's for the price to get to this point. I prefer that one. So I'm going to put a note to that. Just put it as a preference. Uh, thanks. So, our zone. So, I between the two of them there. That is where we're coming from. The question is why did the price start moving from here? So, I want to check the strength of the move going up. If you look at that, that is a daily base we are coming from. So it's a daily base, first one, and go for the second one. So I'm going to go back to my four hour and look at it and continue. So okay, I've seen why it's, where it's come from. It's taking out this base here, which is the first structure. We mostly people refer to as a structure, but I just call it the first base. There's a base up here that has been taken. This was the last base drop base that we used to take that out. So I'm going to click on it. So that's my four hour by area, but I need to validate it to be sure that it's going to happen. The price must not, if the price takes out this zone, I'm not interested. Even by, even poking below that, 
Like, what happened here? Even having a week coming below that, I'm no longer interested. If the hour zone is effective, it should not, okay. So the next thing I'll check now is I'll go to my one hour. Now, if I go to my one hour, let me now pull this down a bit. So if I go to my one hour, look at what happened here. When the price moved from here, you only had one. When the price took off from here, you had one base, then you continue rally straight. But when it's coming back down, it was just coming all the way straight and only been an indication that, okay, that place is most likely going to play out. The reason being that, let's do it in a simple math. All these sellers here, take out all these buyers here. That is one one. But look at the way this buyers came in. When they want to take out this place, they didn't wait, they didn't waste time. They just came in a few dilly dally around and just took it out. But look at when he came out all the way from there and said, No, we are not selling anymore. The discount is finished. However, the seller said, No, we still want that, we still willing to offer you more discount. And the buyer said, Okay, no problem. Give us a discount. And they're giving them the last sort of discount coming down here. It's gonna time out in a few in one minute. Okay, back in again. I don't know if it's gonna if it's gonna Hello. So once it comes down to this point now, I can see that reaction. Look at how the, the, the big rejection came out here. Second rejection here. Look at how the weeks are coming up on this grand area. What I expect price to do now is four hour, but I'll take it back to four hour. Bring back my indicators. It's not set yet. So which means that is going to keep basing here for a while. However, if I want to trade on a shorter time frame, I'll go down to one hour. If you look at it, it's not even reacting. It just came in and told me it's going to go up, but it's basing. There is no. So I'm going to be waiting for this price in that area until I see a reason to buy. But I'm hopeful it's going to go. What I expect to happen here is it's going to be doing range bound in here for a while until everything's settled. Then you start moving back up. However, like I said earlier, if he pokes here with even a single place, the next place I'll be looking for will be somewhere around here. All the way lower here. That seems to be the next best place to buy but as far as i'm concerned i see expect this place to play out but i've not it has not been validated so if i check it again in 15 minutes you could see even the price action there look at how big the red candles are coming into that area look at how consecutive green candles to, to pull the trend here so i'm not very very optimistic about this but the level is a strong level it's most likely going to play out but it may, it may not start maybe monday it's sunday monday tuesday fine and if you look at it, there's an announcement coming out on, on the pound later this week. Yeah. So most probably that is why it's holding up. And now, no, okay, that will start playing out. But for now, it's not likely to start on Monday. It's not like it's on Sunday. But my directional bias on this, it still remains. We're going from where we are now, from here to here, come down a bit and move up, move up again to this point. Until we get to this point, I'm not selling. If it goes the other way, fine. But my direction bias at the moment, it still remains long. Is there any other pair somebody want to look at again? We have less than, I think, less than five minutes to go. Do you have any other pair you want to look at? Hello, Francis. Yeah, um, Hello. actually, we have, we have just about um, seven minutes left on the call. So um, I don't know if people are okay. willing to okay. Then I'm happy to come back on the call. So I'll throw it to the people in the chat box. If you are happy for us to look for some more chats, then yeah, we will be happy to go through some more chats with you. Give me a one in the chat box. I'll put a one, in, put one on the chat box if you're happy for what's come back. So let's see how many people want to come back. Then we'll come back in. All right, honey. we're gonna close the call now. Yeah. Um, sorry, OJ. We're okay. gonna now. And I'm gonna ask everybody to jump back on in the next two minutes. Then we are going to look at AUD, USD, and then GBP, JPY. The, the choices that people have come to the channel. So please meet us back here in the next two minutes. Okay, then. Oh, thank you. I'll see you in a bit.